Hi guys, it's Claire's and today we're going to do a tutorial, another holiday Christmas tutorial and this time we're going to do a bird uh, with some nice foliage. So uh, I'm just going to do a very quick basic sketch to start off uh, just, to, just to kind of give myself an idea of where the bird is going to be and it's going to be almost like a wreath so we'll have like the foliage coming off to the side and the bird will be in the center here. So I'm just gonna do a little blob for it. And uh, this style, we are going to keep it very loose and uh, fun and flowy. So literally I am doing almost like the shape of an egg here with a slight protrusion on this side to kind of show the wing. And I'll just kind of draw that area as well here. So you could almost look at this portion as a leaf and you're doing like a slightly tilted egg, but you're not drawing the whole thing in. And at the top here is where we will have the beak. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. And we have that. And we'll have the eye happening right here. So we have this head, we have the beak, maybe the eye is slightly closer. The beak here, slight little chin. And then the protruding wing, so to speak. Now this bird will be like a blend of colors, so you won't quite see as much detail as I've given it. And I'm just gonna erase, try and erase the lines because sometimes I find when you paint over them, they kind of seal the pencil in there. So pencil markings in there. So I'm just kind of Erasing as much as I can. So that's the bird, and we'll have some berries, uh, mistletoe, holly, all that good stuff happening from it. So let's tackle the bird first. Uh, and for that, I am going to be using, or just generally for this whole painting, I will be using my number eight silver black velvet. I'm going to keep the number eight uh, Princeton handy in case I need it. Definitely my number four because I'm going to need some detail. And uh, yeah, that's it. So for colors, uh, I for the bird, uh, I'm going to be using some of my yellow ochre and I'll be using some of the sepia as well to highlight some dark areas and just a very, very tiny bit of the um, carmine. If you have like a pink or something that you want to use, you can totally use that. All right, so we are ready to begin painting. First things first, I'm going to put some of the yellow ochre down and I am going to use my, I'm gonna use the number eight to get that in because I need a nice wash. So I have some water on the side, mixing some of this paint and I'm just gonna put it on here. Oh, there seems to be some green in there at the bottom. Ah, oh, this is what happens when you mix paints directly in your pans, guys. Okay, so I just need to make sure that I'm taking the paint from the edge for this. All right, that's a better yellow. Okay, so now I'm just gonna start by adding this. So we wanna keep the circle, the area around the eye white. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and paint this bit just the middle bit in this yellow ochre and I'm getting some water and I'm kind of blending the color in. Uh, and while once this is done, what I wanna do is wash off all the paint and using the same brush, I'm going to extend the water all around the bird, leaving some white space here and there and at the top as well, 
Again, making sure you're leaving your white space around the eye. And now once I have that, I'm gonna go in and get some of the sepia. And I am going to add a line to have this color blend in nicely into the bird. And this is where you can have your other number eight handy. So I'm just gonna like wash off with just water on this brush, I'm just washing off and blending this brown a little smoother. And then I'm taking a tad bit of this ready carmine and I'm just kind of inserting it around the bird there and I want it to kind of spread and do a very light blend in with uh, the yellow or the ochre happening and so I'm getting more of the brown and I am going to concentrate a bit of it just at the tad here right there and then I'm adding some strokes over here for indication of this is where the wing is and I'm doing a couple of lines here just to give it some texture and then again we're going back in getting washing off the color and with just water on it a little bit of water we're smoothing out as best as we can so that it's a nice pretty blend and it doesn't look too weird um, I'm getting more of the yellow ochre and I want to put our more concentrated amount in little bits around this area and notice I also have some white space on my bird so hopefully you guys have that too I'm just kind of circulating that yellow around it All right, now once we have that, I'm just gonna go back in with this brush. And instead of the pink, you could have probably even used an orange color if you wish or wished. Uh, and just kind of move the color around. Just give it that hint of pink. Uh, and yeah, so now I'm going back into my, using my number four, getting my sepia. And I wanna like get a nice, amount of it because I want to create a couple of strokes here on the on the um, on the wing to kind of really indicate this is a wing without overworking it too much if that makes any sense and then I'm just gonna get a tad bit more of it here and add some strokes on this side and then finally we'll do the eyes at this point you know what I'm thinking I want some slight darker hues so I'm just gonna take a little bit of black and I'm just adding it to the edge here and then just some right here where the wing is I don't want it to be too, too overpowering, so I'm not kind of going all over the place with it. And then what this will do is this will kind of help with the tie things in with the beak and everything else. Before I do the beak, I just want to smoothen out this black with the rest of the brown so it looks like a nice smooth transition. And finally the beak. Oops! I should have seen that coming. This is why I always have your paper towel ready. There you go. And I'm gonna try and keep a little bit of a gap between because clearly it isn't fully dried. 
there's the beak. And for the eye, remember to leave some white space inside to show that glisten. There we go. And that is how I'm going to leave this bird for now. Uh, actually, before it completely dries, just adding strokes for the wing. And just smoothening out this bit. And we'll, we'll fix the beak better once it's completely dried. Now we can go on to the foliage around it. So for the foliage, I'm going to start off by using some of my some of my uh, umber as the base. And I'll mix some of that onto my palette right here. And so I have a good enough consistency. And using the number four, I'm just going to start drawing or painting some leaves right here, right near the bird. And my reason for doing this is because I don't want it to look super detailed. I want the bird to look loose. Um, and so painting these in right now will help it give it that look and feel that it's like blending in with the leaves. I just took in some of some emerald onto the same brush that I had for the umber. And I'm just getting a couple of strokes in. Here to give it that nice loosey feel. So first thing I'm doing is getting just the umber on and then I'm going in with some of the uh, emerald and just painting in some leaves. And now I can just kind of use what I have here and kind of extend it along. So here's one and let's do one here and I'll just keep these very light and flowy so using trying to use very thin strokes here and every now and then I'm dipping the tip into the uh, emerald. Oops, made a tad mistake there, but that's okay. Keeping this loose and fun. So same thing on this side. I'm adding a couple of like dotted strokes. You can see that here and there. Just to kind of give it that loose feeling or look. And you see how you can just like blend in a couple of colors and get some, oops, don't do that. We'll figure that out. <laughs> figure some, uh, sorry, lost my train of thought after that mistake. Um, blending two colors can really make things go to the next level is what I was trying to say. So I'm just doing some very, very basic strokes here to kind of create that look and feel of looseness. And again, I'm doing, I'm gonna create some more at the top. Uh, and we'll have them kind of just like that. Oh, wrong direction. So they can be like almost as thin as, and these are tapering off, they're going light and they're like disappearing. They're um, almost as thin as uh, rosemary, I guess you can say. Yeah, I'm liking this blend of um, the 
umber with the emerald. It's quite nice. So just make sure you're just using the slightest area of the tip of your brush. You can see how thick they are, but you can achieve some really thin ones if you really just use a little bit of it. So this is the greenery that we have going on. Uh, what else? Uh, now we can kind of go and add a tad bit more greenery just at the bottom here. Uh, similar to what we've been doing and then we kind of go and add some of the berries and whatnot that we have going on. So I'm doing the exact same thing. Just blending in just the two colors that I told you I've been using. And it's giving me a very pretty blend that I like. And I don't even have to use my favorite, which is the um, typically the green from St. Petersburg. So I'm just adding the emerald in these areas so it like gives it a little more pop. All right, so now we can kind of go ahead and do some of the holly, mistletoe, berry, all that good stuff. All right, so we'll do a little bit of mistletoe right under the uh, bird. So for that, we will use most of the emerald and I'm going to mix this emerald with my favorite green and let's just make it pop. So my favorite green, which is called green from St. Petersburg. So I am going to go ahead and create the leaves first and we're gonna kind of do it in like this. So I'm gonna draw the stem and then we'll have some branches coming out from the stem. And then I'm going to get some color directly from the green and I'm going to create start creating these little leaves that are a lot darker than the rest of the leaves that we've done in this painting and keeping in with our whole loose style. And they're more like rounded leaves than anything else. And the stem is still damp, so we're getting a nice blend of color. And feel free to leave white space in between the leaves if you wanna do that. And again, like a couple of dots here and there to kind of show it kind of tapering off. And while we still have this damp and nice, let's just do another one over here. I need it to be a darker. And if it's overlapping on some of them, it's okay because it's a darker color compared to what we've been laying down for the base leaves. So keep that in mind. And they're just rounded leaves, guys. So. And because this is loose, I don't know if I am getting the roundedness as well as I did here. But we're just going to go ahead and continue creating this. I'm just adding some darker shades, hues here. Perfect. So we have that happening there. You can have a couple peeking off to the side if you wish and can be slightly lighter just so it doesn't look quite random that there's only some on this side and not anywhere else. Um, and it doesn't have to be super detailed or dark. Like the ones we've done there. 
So I'm just doing them off to the side, kind of. So hopefully this is making sense for you guys in terms of execution. All right, I'm trying to not overdo it there. Okay, so now we can do the berries. And so for the berries, um, I'm gonna use the same Carmen that we used for the bird, just to sort of tie the colors in. And I'm gonna mix some onto my palette. And I will add a very tiny bit of black into it. Just like a swab. And now I'm gonna go ahead and create some berries. Okay, I need more of the red. It's too watered down. And I'm leaving white space. So, just so you guys know. in between the berries. We've done this several, several, several times. You guys should know how to do this by now. Um, I'm sure you do know. And uh, create some here. Some can be dark, some can be light. Some can be just like dots. Uh, Cause again, we like our dots and kind of fading off in the background kind of feel, effect. Some in between the leaves that are maybe they're like in the background, overlapping. We can blend some in with the green if it's still pretty damp. Some here below the bird. Uh, lots and lots of areas where you can kind of just make, create these berries and just make it pop. So I'm just going to create some over here and these I'm going to try and keep them light and not as detailed. And you can see these ones are kind of blending in with the green. And I'm just going to leave that as that. And so there we go. We have our berries. All right. Next thing, just for some visual color stimulation, I am going to add these cute little, uh, I guess you can call them leaves. And I'm mixing my golden with the yellow ochre. And I want like a nice warm orangey gold color, which looks like that. And so for this, again, I'm using my number four. And we're just going to do something like this. So just adding these organic shapes. And like trailing off into like a dot or two or whatever. And again, we'll do some here. Organic shapes like really organic guys like you're literally just painting you're trying to paint a circle But it's not quite a circle and then I'm gonna take my number Eight Princeton because it's got a nice sharp tip or edge or yeah tip uh, And I am going to connect While it's still damp because then it gives me a nice Cute blend and sometimes not so cute like this one over here and I'm not fully connecting them they're just kind of some of them have room in between I guess you can see and yeah I'll just do a couple here as well so you can kind of see it protruding And it doesn't quite look random that it's only on the sides. And again, we'll have our uh, 
branch coming up from there and and it, it'll help to have to have it like in variations of uh, this hue so right now it's like you can have some light ones tapering off to the end you can connect the edges with the yellow like I just did here these are super light here that I'm adding on And if you feel like it's too much, just take your paper towel and dab it off. But I love how the colors kind of blend in and it looks quite nice. Um, lastly, to fix this, what I would do is we have quite a bit of color left or the, or the green that's kind of left over. And so we can do some very cute, loose, organic shapes to create leaves. Now, they could be exactly in this kind of consistency where it's like, more water less color so it's kind of fading off to the sides and we can make them like just like these shapes that I have here just make sure you don't have too much on your brush so just tuning into those organic shapes that we created and then just taking water to kind of smoothen things out and have it just fade into our little nest or whatever you want to call it. And I'm just adding a couple of strokes here and there. And so this method is also used, this fading method that I like to call, is used in the rose tutorial that I did recently that many of you guys liked. The really faded roses that kind of looked dreamy and like almost like a um, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for like uh, wallpaper that's it so I'm doing some there I'm trying to make it mimic the organic shape that I have here so I washed off a lot of my color and I'm kind of just adding moving the color around by adding water and then my famous drip drops or dots whatever you want to call it just adding some light ones here for additional texture and interest there we go I don't want to make that too big and too much although I think it kind of is a little bit I'll just add some over here too And there we go. So this is our painting with the bird. Uh, feel free to add more stuff all around. I just want to quickly look at the beak. I think it's good enough. And I think this works very well. So I'm just going to quickly add a proper beak. I proper mean like I feel like it was not executed as well there we go and then the eye is okay yes the eye is okay I believe there we go okay so we are done hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial let me know in the comments what you guys thought um, if you added anything additional and extra to it uh, like the video, share it in social media circles, guys. It really does help my channel. And I love seeing how you guys, um, how yours turned out. So please do send me images on either Facebook or Instagram. And as always, thanks so much for sharing your time with me. And we'll chat soon. Bye.